In this segment, I'm going to talk about the remove overlaps and sequence options for your object properties. And perhaps what I can do is just put my object properties toolbar back onto my desktop just to make some space. So just to show you how to do that, I click in, on the top of my toolbar. And now you can see here that there's these um, little windows that come up, I guess little options. So where do you want to place it? If I want to put it on the right hand window, I can just click on that spot and it puts it in place. Now I can use this slider to decide how much space I'm willing to dedicate to that toolbar. And now I'm ready to go. And perhaps what I'll do is I'm just going to delete this object. And I'm going to create a couple of objects. And I'll just stick to simple shapes, like an, an ellipse. But I'm going to overlap them. Okay. So where we have now is two objects. And remember, each one is a complete circle. But the, the concept in object properties is how does it, how do you um, control the overlaps? What do you want the software to do where two pieces of fill are overlapped? And you can see right now that remove overlaps is set on auto. The choice is basically auto, never, or always. Okay. And so we'll start with that. So everything's set on auto for these two weave fills. And what I'm going to do just to show you how it works, I'll just zoom in. I'm going to pop up the slow redraw tool. And we'll just basically get it started. And it's going to sew really quickly. But you can see quite clearly that what it's done is it's created, first of all, I'm just going to stop it right there. It went around the shape and created um, what's known as net underlay or weave underlay basically we've got a bunch of stitches that are perpendicular to our fill angle but what you can see here is even though my oval is underneath this top oval the um, places where they overlap have been removed and so that's because of the setting that was used automatically remove and so if I close my slow redraw select back on these objects that's what I'm talking about here. Remove overlaps is auto. Now, maybe what I'll do, I'm going to select these two objects, and I'm going to choose remove overlaps, and I'll just make it never. Now, if I was to do the same sort of thing, go through slow redraw, and then watch how this sews, we can see here that it no, it is no longer removing the overlap. So that's your ability to override remove overlaps in your design. So I'll just stop this. And, room, and go backwards. Now, um, so the other choice is always. So if you want to guarantee that it's going to remove overlaps, you can set it to always. If you want the software to decide, which is generally speaking the best way to leave it, which is the default, how it comes up, leave it on auto. So it's always auto or never for removing overlaps. Now, when you talk about sequence, well, obviously, the sequence is going to be um, what was done first and what was done second. But if you recall, in a segment we looked at earlier, where we talked about how the software has automatic sequence control, and it basically decides the sewing sequence of your design. But you do have the ability to decide, OK, I want this to you know, move this to the start of my design, or move it to the, en to the end of my design, and then now we've used that to override the sewing sequence of the design. So now if I say start, it starts with this object. And because I moved this one to the end, now that one's going to sew second. So yeah, um, here we are watching our design sew at 8,000 stitches per minute. And don't you wish our machines could just blast it off like that. But anyways, it's very helpful. The slow redraw is a very helpful tool in being able to see how is my design going to be stitched. And so you can see clearly that um, now that it's finished this uh, piece of fill, now it's going to switch to doing the other one. So that was by changing the sequence control in your object properties. So that's the remove overlaps option and the sequence control option in the object properties. And so the next segment, I'm going to come back and talk a little bit more about the remainder of the object properties choices for density, stitch length, compensation, and underlay.